Why, hello. Hello, guys. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to start this video off by saying I am so sorry for this random bookshelf. It's not mine. It's my parents. We're just going to pretend it's not in this video. Today, we are going to start a new little series where I talk about my Ipsy items and my BoxyCharm items that I got in the mail this month. A reason I'm doing this though is though that I can thoroughly look at the products that BoxyCharm and Ipsy are sending me, tell you if they're diverse, tell you if they're worth it. So today we are going to be talking about all the Ipsy products I got and I looked into the ingredients, I looked into the company, your girl went hard. These are all the products that I got in my Ipsy bag and let me just start off by saying this is, this is really not a lot. To start off this video, which is on the Ipsy bag, we're going to review Ciate London Watermelon Primer. Now, for the full retail price, for the full size, this is $28. And at first, I was like, hold up. Because when I look at primers, I think of skincare. Now, I'm not an expert on skincare. If you want to look into skincare more, please go visit the account Skincare with Hiram. I'm getting a lot of information from him and just little studies that I'm doing on my own. So if you really want to get into skincare, please go visit him. I'm going to give you guys what I found and what my research is. The hydrating ingredient in this entire primer is supposed to be hyaluronic acid, which I do love. I love hyaluronic acid because it makes your skin so hydrated. It brings in so much moisture and makes your skin really, really soft and supple because it alleviates dryness. So let's start with the pros. I do like that it is initially hydrating. I put it on my face and it feels really nice and like supple. Um, it makes my skin feel like very dewy, which I like. I like to have dewy skin. This isn't a cream based primer. This is more like a gel primer. So you don't really need that much on your face. Well, I kind of go in with a lot because your girl has super dry skin, but you don't really need a ton. The beginning part of the list, there's nothing, I couldn't find any ingredients that I specifically didn't like. They just didn't seem like they needed to be there. Now, I will say that while hyaluronic acid was much lower on the list, that is because you can only use hyaluronic acid at like a certain consistency. If you go over that point, then it might not be too great for your skin. It could be like too much. So I don't really mind that hyaluronic acid is towards the middle of the list. I can understand why that might be. And I would just want a few less ingredients. I feel like this has a lot of ingredients that just don't really need to be in there. One of those ingredients actually being alcohol. I just feel like alcohol doesn't really need to be in the primer unless they're using it as a preservative. And still, there are so many other preservatives that if you just up this to $30 instead of $28, you could use that as a preservative instead of alcohol. Another thing I had a problem with is that they use fragrance. So I don't know about you guys, but I do not like having fragrance on my face. It is extremely irritating. It burns really bad on my skin. And if it doesn't burn on your skin, it can still give you guys really bad problems when you're older. You also saw that they have witch hazel in this, which when you combine alcohol, fragrance, and witch hazel, you have a very, very drying product. It's kind of what I would put on to take off my makeup instead of keep on my makeup. And I, I think that it almost entirely defeats the point of having hyaluronic acid. So my overall thoughts of this product are, you know, I enjoyed it. It smelled really good, but I would wish it just didn't have fragrance at all. I did enjoy that it was, you know, moisturizing, but I felt like something can be temporarily moisturizing and drying later on, you know? And I feel like this is kind of what this product is doing. All right, next product. Now this next product, I don't, I don't entirely know why I got this product. Specifically put that I did not want neutral eyeshadows. I have retaken the quiz many times because they keep sending me neutral eyeshadows. I don't want neutral eyeshadows. They keep sending me neutral eyeshadows. It's a disaster. But they did send me it. This is the Jewel Smith little mini eyeshadow. It's actually already broken, even though I haven't opened it. Like the seal is still on there. I gave it to my mom. She doesn't want it either because it's just so neutral, but it's like neutral and shimmery. So I don't, confusion. This does retail for $12, which you know, like for $12, like that's, that's, 
it's not that bad. I think that they could be charging maybe $10 because it is only two eyeshadows, but honestly, that's a fair marketing price. Because this did not fit my preferences, I was already kind of edgy about this brand. And then I looked at the website and the Instagram of this brand and it just 100% would not be a brand that I support. Uh, it has an extreme lack of diversity. They have absolutely zero support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Just anything that like shows me that they're like really invested in diversity, which for me, the very first thing I look at in a brand, I've, I've done this with so many brands, is I look at their diversity. I look at their feed and I see how many models they have that are African American or Latino or Pacific Islander. And this brand, like literally, I had to really, really, really scroll in there to see very many models. And it was like, you know, like it was like maybe one every one to three months. And it's just, no, throw the whole brand away. I can't deal with it. I don't do it. I don't play those games. Don't send me brands that don't reflect my personality because then I, what am I supposed to do with this? What am I supposed to, I, I don't wanna wear it. I don't wanna support it. I have to get my notes. Bam. All right, next product I was actually really excited for and this is like such a disappointer. I saw that they gave me the Environmental Shield Murad um, sunscreen and this is the Essential C Daily Vitamin Broad Spectrum Moisturizer and SPF 30. And here, here's the thing, right? The very first thing that I was a little bit iffy about was that it was called Essential C. Now, if you don't know, vitamin c is it completely unstable and so if you have it in kind of like these like cream forms um it's actually gonna go bad really really fast because it's exposed to air and sunlight and so the first thing i thought was oh gosh i really hope this doesn't have vitamin c and i did look and i couldn't find anything that specifically stated it was vitamin c so i don't i don't know why they're calling it essential c so when I started looking at the active ingredients, the first thing I noticed is that uh, Oxytonex and Oxybenzone are the top ingredients. And if you don't know, those ingredients are what basically make this thing a sunscreen, but they contribute to the coral reefs being like bleached and killed. If you didn't know, let's transition. Um, there are a few chemicals in sunscreen that can actually really hurt the environment, specifically through bleaching coral reefs. And one thing to off with that is to get mineral sunscreens, which don't use these extremely environmentally toxic ingredients so that you avoid hurting the environment. And Murad is actually a really well-known brand, so I don't know why they're using ingredients that could hurt the environment, especially because it's called Environmental Shield. If you're gonna call your product Environmental Shield, and then you're going to use products that kill the ocean, I don't. Okay? And then, upon doing further research about the inactive ingredients, I found that, honestly, there are like three ingredients in here that are just there's there's too many studies on them showing that they're either kind of hazardous to your skin uh or just ones that haven't been studied enough to show that they are or are not hazardous but they're on like one of those watch lists um one of those being home homo slate um and it's being studied for being disruptive to your endocrine system which it needs further study it's in 45 percent of sunscreen so I, I just wish that they could maybe keep that product out and that ingredient out until there were further studies saying that this is definitely safe because i couldn't find any saying that it was definitely safe another one was audiobenzone that has been known to cause extreme skin irritation. And I can't say that when I put this on, it accidentally went in my eyes, like not inside my eyes, but on the eyelids. And who were those burning? Like those were burning bad. It, it hurt pretty bad. And you know, I've had my own struggles with skin irritation, but I just know that when a product irritates me, it's most likely gonna irritate other people who have similar skin irritations. It does also have fragrance and alcohol. There's also a limonene, which is known to cause extreme irritation. And I also found that chlorofencin, which I'll put all the names below, 
uh, can cause eczema and a lot of other high risk skin issues like I have. So, I mean, I've, when you have like over 50% of the ingredients in this product that can cause me skin irritation and then you're going to tell me that it's supposed to moisturize my skin i'm i'm just show me the carfax my overall thoughts are i am almost like scared of how harmful this product can be to people with sensitive skin and you shouldn't ever put something that's known as an irritant in a product why are we still doing this and especially because this retails for 65 dollars you're telling me 65 dollars and you're still gonna irritate my skin are you are you crazy i'm against it i'm not with it i think that if you're gonna pay 65 dollars it should not be hurting our environments it should not be hurting our skin and more research needs to be done into the ingredients that they actually put into their product because what they're showing me now is that they're not actually putting much effort into making this usable and making this good for you they're just trying to pump out fast products oh there there's a little preschool like right across from my house and like the little babies are like out having their having their like little daily snack oh, oh i love the babies on to the next product so this product i was actually really excited for this product is the verb curl cream and it's only 18 dollars, which is actually pretty good for an up and coming curl cream usually all the curl creams i use are from older brands that have been around for a pretty long time and i was really excited to see this one because it's supposed to shape fine uh defrizz and repair hair and it's also for curly thick kinky hair as well as wavy hair i was a little skeptical because usually there's a really big difference between having extremely wavy thick 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 hair and having wavy hair that's fine and having curly kinky hair, which can be thick or fine, but still be like super, super, super curly. Like there is a huge difference between these those things. So I was, I was a little skeptical at first, but I was really excited to use it because it's been such a long time since I've had a curl cream, guys. Now this is my hair with no curl cream in it, just a little bit of oil. I'm using the Honey's Handmade um, oil, which I'll put into the description box below, but. This is basically my hair when I've kind of, you know, put into a style to make it kind of flatter. I've kind of, you know, put in some like loose braiding and uh, put it up into a bun so that it has like a wavy effect, but it's not super curly. That's really the only thing I can do with my hair right now because it's just so, there's just so much hair and it's so freaking long that if I try and make it how it naturally is, which it, it is extremely curly naturally, it just, it just doesn't look right. It, it kind of looks like I have like this and then like curls. It, not good. This just didn't work out. This just didn't work out at all. So the very first thing is I had to use this, all of that being used, like it's down to there now, was from one use. Just to get enough like product and texture in my hair to actually make it like do something. And once I did have enough product in my hair, it just didn't really look like it did anything at all. It kind of looked like this, but like a little bit crunchier, which I am not a crunchy curl girl. If you're a crunchy curl girl, this product might be for you. You're just gonna have to use like a ton of it. When I looked into the ingredient list, I kind of understood why. So the second ingredient is alcohol. And then further down the list, rubbing alcohol is towards the middle of the list, as well as fragrance. And the first thing I thought when I saw that it had two types of alcohol, including rubbing alcohol, as well as fragrance was, who's supposed to use this i just kind of felt like why would you why would you advertise this as something that's supposed to repair hair and like make your hair nice and silky and like moisturized when all you're going to be doing is damaging the person's scalp you know, just advertise it as what it is. You know, this is supposed to give you like nice crunchy styled curls and there are products for that. And this is one of those products. Like if you want nice styled crunchy curls, this is a product for that. But this is not the product that's supposed to repair your hair. This is a product that is going to strip away any existing moisture and oils that are within your hair. If you are gonna use this product, 
maybe consider using it towards like one of the last days of your wash routine. I would probably use this product kind of like how I would use hairspray, right? Like I would use it at the end of the week when I know that I'm gonna get it off my head so that it doesn't stay and penetrate my skin, which is gonna aggravate any underlying conditions I have. So I just wanted to put that out there. Not my favorite cream. I wish they advertised themselves as a styling cream and not a repair cream, because this is not a repair cream. This is not gonna fix your hair. This is just going to style your hair. And I think there's a really big difference there. The next product I wanna talk about is actually this one. It's called Thrive Cosmetics Lip Filler, and this is in the color Devon. I'm actually wearing it today. And this is honestly the only product that I 100% loved. Not only because I love the lip filler itself, I think it's like so nice. It's such like this nice, deep red color. It's almost like red wine. I love it, but because the company itself is probably the only one here that I would 100% ride or die for. Thrive Cosmetics um, is a company that is made to help women. 10% of their proceeds go towards women-founded foundations, women-funded foundations. Currently, they've committed to $500,000 of their funds to be for frontline workers who are women. And then they also have already worked with cancer foundations and foundations for women who have survived domestic abuse as well as homelessness and female veterans, which is like super cool. Um, they also do want to diversify their company more, which is pretty admirable. Like I really enjoy that they are taking accountability for their lack of diversity and really saying like, you know, like we want to do more. They do have a pretty diverse feed. It's not the most diverse, but I do see a lot of women of color on their feed, which I really appreciate because it, I don't like to support foundations that are only for, you know, white women. I like to see that my people and that other people who live in America I like to see that they're getting held and appreciated and uplifted too. I also saw that they did post something um, on their feed committed to hiring more black employees, which, you know, I would like to see it happen first before I say I'm 100%, I love that they're diverse. I'm not saying that they are completely diverse yet, but I see that they are really actually taking the steps to make themselves diverse, which is pretty admirable. And the last product, which is another product where I was just Oh man, Pure Seal is uh, this up and coming company and they sent the illuminating BB cream with SPF 30 in it. And this retails for $30. And let me say that the product itself is really awesome. Um, it's to brighten and protect the skin. And it also has goldie berries and jasmine in it, which is like super awesome. It has tons like tons of ingredients in here to protect your skin from uv rays um it's also reef safe which is really cool the only problem i had is that my shade is the darkest shade i'm gonna go ahead and put up a little picture here of the shade range they have four shades my shade is the darkest shade. And let me say, like, this is my winter shade. The shade that they sent me is my winter shade. So that fact that this is the darkest shade, ju I just lost it. Because it's only $35, so I actually went onto the site to buy the product. I was really, really impressed with this product. And then when I saw that it only had four shades, I lost it. So I did call them out on this. And I did ask them why. And they did send me this message right here that I'm going to clock right there. But after I sent them a message asking them to please do more, they never texted me back. And I know in their text they say, well, we're a small company. We can't like do anything. When you only pick white shades to do your promo or your like beginning line of, you're saying that the only people we care about trying our product is white people.
I just think that's just so disrespectful because this is such a great product and so many other people will want to try this product. And the excuse that, well, we own, we were such a small brand, you know, we didn't have very many products to put out. We could only do a small product line. Why don't you just make that product line in itself diverse? Why only highlight whiteness? Why? Why only choose white audiences? Because the excuse that we're a small company doesn't work. I went to their foundation range and I actually found the colors that they've already used into their foundations. And if you can see here, you know, it's not a wide range, but they do have medium tan and dark colors in this foundation range. So if you can have it here, why not just push the pigmentation over towards this BB cream line too? If you can only release four shades, then make those four shades diverse. Don't only promote whiteness because that is a supremacy ideal of like, oh, well, the white people get to try it first, you know, and the white people get the testers first. Oh, if it goes well, then the other people can have it. I can't, I can't stand that from a company. I did go ahead and look at their diversity statistics. I'm going to leave those there. Um... I don't know guys, I can't support a brand that isn't supporting my family. I can't support a brand that isn't supporting my friends. I can't support a brand that most of my viewers can't buy from. Sorry! So now we get into my overall thoughts of this month's Ipsy Glam Bag. And I'm not really impressed. <laughs> I yet again see like this really lack of investment from Ipsy and good products. And I, I kind of see like this trend of like, oh, well, let's just get this one and this one and this one. It looks kind of cool. It all matches, bam, put them together. Without like real investigation into what the ingredients are and if they're ethical brands. You know, this is the type of research that I see my generation is looking for. I see my generation looking more into brands, asking the important questions, you know, who do you support? Where do you source from? What ingredients do you use, you know? Um, Ipsy on its own has a strong enough diversity team to pull off investing in more diverse companies. You know, I'll put the statistics right here of how diverse Ipsy is, but overall, I just, I just think that they could invest a little bit more and, and put more emphasis on diverse companies because I've seen some diverse companies from them before. I would just like more emphasis on that. So I think that if I was gonna support a company, it's probably gonna be only from Thrive's Cosmetics, which kind of sucked because I, I just didn't see a single brand in here that was from a diverse standpoint. But Ipsy, come on guys, like, come on, come on, I really, I just really want to review products that I actually enjoy reviewing where I'm ranting and raving about these amazing brands and these amazing products. I don't want to see that you are not really putting an emphasis on healthy, good, sustainable, amazing brands. I, I, want, to, I want to see that you're trying. Okay? Okay. I feel like I just had a mom talk with you, Ipsy. <laughs> That is it for today's video, guys. If you did see a product in here that you are questioning or that you want to ask more about, please feel free to leave a little question in the comments below. I love answering your guys' questions. If you guys want to get more into skincare, please go look at Skincare with Hiram because he is mwah, amazing at explaining skincare. He is like a skincare specialist. If you got an ipsy bag this month and have some other products that i didn't get please let me know because i want to look at those products too maybe you are getting better products than me and i'm just like getting the bogus product i want to know i want to know if i'm i, I want i want to know if i'm getting the bad products like low-key do they have me on a list of like bad products that they keep sending me or if you got an ipsy bag with products that you didn't like either please let me know so that we can ask them together to please change up your product list because i'm 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 getting bored. That is it for this video, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time listening to me complain about all these brands. For real, like, I think it's really important that we stop, you know, making all of these brands seem like, yay, I love this, like PR. Like, we really need to talk about the brands that just aren't very good and the products that just aren't very good so that they can get better and so that we don't have to have these stupid videos anymore. If you do like this video, please like, 
comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. And if you don't like this video, don't worry because I have a really cool video coming up about all the brands that I don't see getting enough coverage that need to get coverage. Like these are some amazing brands. So hold tight for that. The Birch Box is coming next soon. So I hope you're ready for that too. And have a wonderful day. Bye guys. Please.